Here. Um, so throughout history, uh, with every viral disease and infection, a percentage of people get sick and don't get better. Historically, we've seen that um, with uh, the 1918 pandemic, Ebola, MERS, SARS, H1N1, and obviously it happens with people with mononucleosis from the Epstein-Barr virus. That's my story. Um, and after six months, uh, many of them are eligible for an ME-CFS diagnosis. So my question to you, Ron, is when this coronavirus swept the globe last year, um, I'm wondering if you, know, you were one of the few people, uh, one of the few scientists out there who knew that there would be a percentage of people who would stay sick, and they're calling it now post-acute COVID syndrome, uh, but patients tend to call it long COVID. Uh, did you know that there would be a percentage of people who would stay sick and that they would likely, uh, within six months, many of them, not all of them, obviously we hope they all get better, um, but some of them would meet the diagnostic criteria for ME-CFS, and are you researching this patient population? Well, I didn't know, but I strongly suspect, given all the other viruses that cause this problem, uh, that uh, that they would uh, come down. It would be something like 10%. Um, and talking to the Stanford uh, people who work in the Stanford Hospital, uh, the, the infectious disease people say that it looks like it's at Stanford, at least it's like 30%. Uh, now, <clears throat> it's, it's a good chance that some of them will get better. And... Uh, and not, uh, not go to the six months um, to get a diagnosis for me, but a, a lot of them will get diagnosed, I suspect. Uh, I find a little shocking that nobody wants to call this uh, potentially MECFS. Uh, they want to call it something different. Uh, that is a little dangerous because uh, it, you'll then have another disease that people will start studying uh, and spend a lot of effort re reinventing the wheel. and. Uh, uh, dividing this up into a bunch of different diseases is, is always a big mistake, I think. We ought, to, we ought to lump it all together. And, and uh, then we have a very large number of patients and everybody to join forces and share data and so forth. And, and you can study each one and maybe there are some differences and, uh, and sort out what's in common, what's different. And what we want to try, find out is what's actually causing this. So this, uh, this pandemic is an opportunity because we will probably for the first time see patients that have just come down with MECFS. And that's probably just after or during the viral infection itself. And uh, uh, usually we don't get to see a patient until three or so uh, three or four years after they've been di after they've had a disease, but it takes so long to get diagnosed. So it's so been very useful. You're watching this happen in, in live time and you're getting to study people in live time. That's